at this suggestion and the advice of one of the greatest Muslims of Al-Islam, Al-Imam Al-Sha'bi. Al-Imam Al-Sha'bi was from the Tabi'een. He saw Al-Imam Abu Hanif and he thought he was a student. So when he found out that he wasn't a student, he said, you're an intelligent young man. I advise you to start occupying yourself and busying your time with that which is going to benefit you and is going to benefit the ummah and you'll get your reward in the hereafter, you and your parents. So Imam Abu Hanifa turned to getting knowledge from those scholars who he took knowledge from, and there are many, there are many, obviously is Al-Imam Shu'ba, or Al-Sha'bi, tremendous scholar, as well as Amr ibn Dinar from the Tabi'een, Al-Qama, the student of Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhu, Qatada, he had a lot of people who taught him. But the one who Al-Imam Abu Hanifa was affected by the most was a scholar by the name of Hamad ibn Abi Sulaiman. If you're a Hanafi, I mean, the Hanafis don't know, as the Malikis don't know, and the Ahmadis, the, the people of the Hanbali Madhab, they don't know, because a lot of times we just take the Madhab without getting knowledge about what's really from the Madhab. Anyone who is on the Hanafi Madhab he knows that, or he should know, something about Hamad ibn Abi Sulaiman. Because he was the one who, as I said, impacted, weren't very nice about Imam Abu Hanifa in this important book. Also, Imam ibn Hibban. Ibn Hibban al-Busti is from the Ulama al-Hadith. He has a book that's from the most important books of Hadith that the Muslim has to have, the student of knowledge has to have, the Sahih of Ibn Hibban, Abu Hatim al-Busti. So they wrote in unfavorable terms, unfavorable terms against Al-Imam Abu Hanifa. But there was one scholar who was fair and just amongst many others, someone we should know. His name is Al-Khatib Al-Baghdadi. He wrote a book, Ikhwani, that is about 35 volumes. It's called The History of Al-Baghdad. This scholar decided to write a small biography about every single scholar who ever entered into Baghdad from the time that Baghdad started. So he named any and everyone, whether you lived there or whether you traveled there and you visited there, he wrote about every scholar who he can think of who visited that place. Gives you an idea and an indication about how the ulama of al-Islam were. And al-Imam Khatib al-Baghdadi deserves that we bring information about his life story to you as, as well. In his book, the history of al-Baghdad, he brought those people who made disparaging remarks against al-Imam Abu Hanifa, and he brought the other side of the coin, those people who praised him. And he was fair and just, and he took the best from both sides because al-Imam Abu Hanifa, he fell prey to what many of the awliya of Allah fall prey to, and we hope and wish and believe that he's from the awliya of Allah. People go overboard in the awliya of Allah. People go overboard in the righteous people. And Imam Abu Hanifa have a group of people who follow him and believe in him, and they put him above the station that Allah Ta'ala is pleased with, and we're going to come to that, inshallah Ta'ala. We want to look at it, Khwani, what the other three scholars, the three, three imams of the madhab, what did they say about Al Imam Abu Hanifa? Someone asked Al Imam Malik, who was born after Al Imam Abu Hanifa, and he was from the Shiyukh of Abu Hanifa. Abu Hanifa took from Al Imam Malik, although Al Imam Malik was younger than him. So, someone who loves Abu Hanifa shouldn't say, How can he say that? How can he say that? Some people are like that. They don't like you to say something like that. And it's a fact. And people of knowledge, they know, as Al Imam al Bukhari said, a man will never mount up to anything. He will never become an imam or an alim, a scholar, until he takes knowledge from those who are above him. And he takes knowledge from those who are on his level. And until he takes knowledge from those who are below him. The Prophet ﷺ did not prevent his companions from learning things from the Yahud and the Nasara. If they said what was the truth, he would concur. Even if Iblis taught the people that which was the truth, like Ayatul Kursi is the greatest ayat of the Quran. It's the truth. So he told the people, Sadaqa, wa huwa kathub. He told its truth, Iblis, in teaching you 
that Ayat al-Kursi is the greatest Ayat of the Quran, but he's a pathological chronicle. He's a big liar. So the point is, they asked Al-Imam Malik, did you see Abu Hanifa? He said, nah, I saw him. I saw a man who, if he wanted to convince you that this pole right here in this masjid was made out of gold, he had the ability to establish his argument and the proof, and you walked away thinking it was made out of gold. Some of the people who loved Al-Imam Abu Hanifa, they looked at that statement of Al-Imam Malik as something positive. Other people who hate him, they looked at that statement as something that was negative. It seems to be a positive statement. It shows the dhaka, the intellect, the sharpness of his mind. And Imam Abu Hanifa was the type of person, if you debated him, he would twist you up. And the only people that were able to deal with him and his intellect were the ulama of al-hadith. Because they had the minhaj al-salafi to deal with it. And they had knowledge of the sunnah to deal with it. But when Imam Abu Hanifa used to argue his fiqh opinions, if you were not qualified, it was known during that time, don't deal with them. So I believe that Imam Malik was praising him, praising him his sharp mind. During the life of Imam Abu Hanifa, the leader of that time, Al Mansur, they used to call him as Safah, the one who used to spill the blood. He didn't hesitate to chop your head off. If he wanted you to do something or to say something, he would approach you. You were a scholar other than a scholar. If he told you or asked you to do something and you didn't do it, he didn't hesitate to take your head off. He came to Imam Abu Hanif and said, I want you to be the main judge. You're the main judge over the whole country right here in Al Iraq. Imam Abu Hanif said, I don't want to. I'm not the man for the job. I'm not qualified. I'm not the best one for the job. He became angry because he couldn't believe. He would say no in the first place. And plus, it's a good job with a lot of money. He said to Al Imam Abu Hanifa, you're a liar. You're not the man for the job. You're just lying. Al Imam Abu Hanifa said, that's what I'm saying. If I'm a liar, then I shouldn't be the judge. And if I'm not a liar, I'm telling the truth. I'm not the man for the job. The man got so upset because of that intellect, he put him in the prison. And when he went to the prison, Al Imam Abu Hanifa died in the prison. He died in the year 105, and he was, rahimahullah ta'ala, 70 years old. At the age of 70, he died in the prison. So many people, because he died in the prison and he opposed the Khalifa, many people give him the stamp of approval for that, because that's their Islam, opposing the leader and going to prison. You're not a real Muslim man until you go to prison. That's not our deen. The prison is a fitna, and nobody should want to be in a fitna unnecessarily. They asked Al-Imam Al-Shafi'i Rahimahullah Ta'ala concerning Al-Imam Abu Hanifa, his intellect. That's what he meant by that statement. The other people were against him. They said, you see this statement of Al-Imam Abu Hanifa goes to show he's a person who makes a lot of argumentation. Al-Mira wa Jidal. He's an individual, an individual who's going to get someone to understand that this pole is made out of gold. That's magic. And the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Inna min al bayan la sihran. Verily, some speech is magic. Some people have that ability. So you have to be careful. So that's what they attributed to that statement of Al Imam Malik. But it appears Al Imam Malik was praising him in this regard. They asked Al Imam al Shafi'i, who was born after Al Imam Malik, Abu Hanifa, Al Imam Malik, Al Imam al Shafi'i. So, what do you think about Al Imam Abu Hanifa? He said, Al Nas fil fiqh. He said, in terms of fiqh, in regards to the jurisprudence of Al-Islam, the fiqh of Al-Islam, all of the people are the children of Abu Hanifa. He said that the fiqh of Al-Islam revolves around Al Imam Abu Hanifa, Sufyan al Thawri, Al Imam Al Awza'i, and Ibrahim Ibn Rahuya. So he has something positive to say about Al-Imam Abu Hanifa. Al-Imam Al-Dhahabi rahimahullah ta'ala who mentioned this statement of Al-Imam Al-Shafi that all of the people are children of Abu Hanifa when it comes to fiqh. He said, Al-Imama fil fiqhi wa daqaiqihi musallamatun ila hadha al-imam wa hadha amru la shakka fihi. al 